Judges chapter 10. After the time of Abimelech, a man of Issachar named Tola, son of Pua and son of Dodo, rose to save Israel. He lived in Shamar, the hill country of Ephraim. He led Israel 23 years, then he died and was buried in Shamar. He was followed by Jair of Gilead, who led Israel 22 years. He had 30 sons who rode 30 donkeys. They controlled 30 towns in Gilead, which to this day are called Havok Jer. When Jer died, he was buried in Cainon. Again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. They served the Baals and the Ashtoreths and the gods of Aram, the gods of Sidon, the gods of Moab, the gods of the Ammonites, and the gods of the Philistines. And because the Israelites forsook the Lord and no longer served him, he became angry with them. He sold them into the hands of the Philistines and the Ammonites, who that year shattered and crushed them. For eighteen years they oppressed all the Israelites on the east side of the Jordan in Gilead, the land of the Amorites. The Ammonites also crossed the Jordan to fight against Judah, Benjamin, and Ephraim. Israel was in great distress. Then the Israelites called out to the Lord, We have sinned against you, forsaking our God and serving the Baals. The Lord replied, When the Egyptians, the Amorites, the Ammonites, and the Philistines, the Sidonians, the Amalekites, and the Maonites oppressed you, and you cried out to me for help, did I not save you from their hands? But you have forsaken me and served other gods, so I will no longer save you. Go and cry out to the gods you have chosen, and let them save you when you're in trouble. But the Israelites said to the Lord, We have sinned. Do with us whatever you think best, but please rescue us now. Then they got rid of the foreign gods among them and served the Lord, and he could bear Israel's misery no longer. When the Ammonites were called to arms and camped in Gilead, the Israelites assembled and camped at Mizpah. The leaders of the people of Gilead said to each other, Whoever will take the lead in attacking the Ammonites will be head over all who live in Gilead. So in verse 1, we read, After the time of Abimelech, a man of Issachar named Tola rose up to save Israel. So the next judge is a man named Tola. And uh, he lived in the area of Ephraim, the tribe of Ephraim. And he led Israel 23 years, then he died and was buried. So this man's whole history as a judge was not very august in terms of the description of his his, uh, rule. But he ruled for 23 years. There's nothing exceptionally good or exceptionally bad said about him. And then we get an even shorter epitaph. He was followed by Jair of Gilead, who led Israel 22 years. And it mentions his 30 sons had 30 mules, um, but they had the mules and and, uh, he died. So he led 22 years. Again, a very short uh, epitaph on this judge of Israel. In verse 6, we get this cycle of judges explained all over again. And so the Israelites, in verse 6, did evil in the sight of the Lord. They served other gods, and the Lord was angry with them. And so it says the Lord sold them into the hands of the Philistines and the Ammonites for 18 years. They oppressed all the Israelites and so forth. So Israel once again sinned. And then judgment came on them. In verse 10, they humbled themselves. They cried out to the Lord, we've sinned against you, forsaking our God, etc. And then he corrects them. In verse 11, he reminded them that he had already delivered them from the Egyptians, the Amorites, the Ammonites, the Philistines, etc. But they kept forsaking him and serving other gods. So he says, I'm done with you people. I'm not going to save you anymore. Go and cry out to the false gods you've chosen and let them save you, he says. But the Israelites said, no, no, we've sinned. We'll do whatever's necessary. Please, just save us, and we will serve you. So they asked the Lord for a leader. And uh, this is where we leave this chapter, except the Ammonites are attacking them. So they need a leader, a judge. This is really a pitiful state of affairs, this cycle. You know, the Lord blesses them. The Lord raises up a godly leader. 
they do well during the lifetime of the godly leader. And then when he dies, they backslide. They begin to worship other gods and reject Yahweh, their God. Then oppressors come. They humble themselves. They cry out to the Lord. The Lord corrects them. The Lord forgives them. The Lord rescues them, raise up another judge. And then here we go again. They start the cycle all over again. So, Lord, we just pray, first for the Jewish people, may they be continually humble before you. May they yet humble themselves before you. We know, God, that historically they've recognized that all of this idolatry was a huge problem. We pray for them, Lord, for your redemptive purposes for Israel. And we pray for ourselves and our friends and families, Lord. Lord, help us to break these cycles, these destructive cycles. Help us to serve you faithfully And no other gods, no other lovers in the mix, Lord, no strange gods, just our God. We love you. We bless you. We thank you for what Jesus has done for each of us. In his name we pray. Amen.